Now, to begin with, residents of King Asi Ejumemi in the Akwabri East District of the Ashanti region have blocked the main King Asi Ejumemi road in protest of its deplorable state. The protest disrupted traffic on the stretch as the protested, protesters pardon me, mounted barriers and burned car tires, leaving commuters stranded. Attempts by the police to control the protest were fiercely resisted. There was heated argument between the police and the protesting residents. The police tried to disperse the demonstrators and remove the barricade, but the angry protesters resisted the move. It took the intervention of the police reinforcement to calm the situation. Some angry protesters spoke to our I was born in 1954. I have never seen our road tarred. They always deceive us to vote for them. I am an MPP chairperson. I am an asthmatic patient. I always buy medicine. And I expected the president to fix my road. I have stayed here for 60 years, but I have never seen any tarred wood in this community. They always start and never finish. This roadblock is not intentional. We just want our road fixed. Stone chips meant for the construction are left on the road. The residents want the road fixed as promised by the government prior to the 2020 election. According to the unit committee chairman, Yawin Sia, the contractor left the site after the election. The drivers complain about the stones on this road. They can easily cause an accident. The contractor says he's not been paid and that is why he has left the site. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Awuku Denchambo. Now, residents of five affected mining communities in the Ahafu regions are agitated against what they allege to be unfair treatment by Newman, Ghana. The locals are unhappy as the total rejection of their inputs into a new agreement with the multinational gold mining company, with the exception of 100% employment opportunities for unskilled residents. The coalition of affected communities is also upset that the eight-year mandate of the moderator and co-moderator of the Ahafo Social Responsibility Forum expired in 2018, but they remain in office. Efforts by Joy News for Newmont to respond to the concerns of the communities have not been fruitful. A report by Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin. The communities say the agreements reach have been shelved. They are Kenyasi number one, Kenyasi number two, and Tontroso, Jedu, and Wamahenso. They claim the moderator's actions seek to favor Newmont, which has already affected portions of agreements that share the Newmont Ahafo Development Fund to all the 10 communities in the area. The moderator, I have been on a forum for my first time, and the moderator doesn't give room for people to express themselves. What the moderator does is to possibly read or mention what he thinks or what has been discussed with Newmont and or at the standing committee level. Then they only come and then present it, brush it through, and the majority of the people who go there may not necessarily 
challenge or say anything and that, so it becomes uh, something that has been accepted. And this is how it, uh, the forum has been. The coalition also demands New Montana Limited validates their employees annually to afford them the opportunity to know how many residents have been employed. Revalidation is when a community reaffirms its members who are working with Newmont or her contractors. The company has also made an employment agreement with the community, which is also in the social responsibility agreement. Uh, over the years, the company uh, made an agreement that they were going to give about uh, some percentage to the community. They gave 35% initially. But what the community saw was that when the agreement came out, it was, 20, it was reduced to about 24, 24. And this is what we think is uh, something that has passed through the back door into the agreement. Because at the meeting, you said you were going to give 35%. But what we realized was it was uh, 24%. This was uh, a step in the back. This current one that is going on, people agreed, Nananum and everybody at the forum agreed that they were going to give 53%. But uh, when the, 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 the draft came out that they were going to prepare to sign, we saw that it has reduced from 53 to 35. So had it not been some vigilance that some of us went through it and we saw it, people were going to sign it like that and it will come and it, was, it is 35 instead of 53. Percentages in Newmont's fund contribution were part of the petition sent to the company. Also, the percentage of uh, good given, the percentage of uh, uh, money is given from the proceeds of the good, that's the ounces of good produced and how money is given is what we are not happy about. As uh, some of our brothers have earlier talked about, since 2008, the uh, uh, price of an ounce of good was around $800. Now, as of uh, even October last year, it was around 1,946.8. So recently, it is around 1,008,007. So it's more than double of what was uh, being procured for or what was uh, given in 2008. Yet, so now, the one dollar is still given. So, for, so imagine one dollar given to a whole 10 communities and 1,945 given to Newmont. It's too much a cheat. Here, we want to say that we do not need any one dollar. So we want percentages. So so that whether it goes up or down, the percentage will, will fare better even on our petitions. So we just want to say that we are standing at 3%, so that at least the 3%, we can use them to build our infrastructure, we can build some roads, we can build schools, we can build other things, so that if Newmont is not here one day, we will still not regret so much where that uh, Newmont came to our land. They also want the standing committees abolished and full strength given to the forum where members, including chiefs, make decisions. We therefore want the standing committee uh, situation to change. There shouldn't be anything called standing committee. Forum is forum. Anything to be discussed should be discussed at forum. Just write out. Not that we go, some people, few people go there and get somewhere. It brings a brief mistrust between some Nananum and then even the youth. They think that Nananum have been possibly, excuse my words, bribed or something. When it has never been the case because I don't know our Nananum, they were those who created this forum. They, Nananum uh, made sure that this forum comes into being. It was non-existent until some Nananum got together and in, in involved some new month officials at that time. I remember of Mr. Atwabin and others who created this forum. So Nananum are always to help us, but how uh, Newman try to quen and corner uh, them and then insist on what they have, Nananum will always have to give in and at the end it will affect the communities. So we just want the standing committee to be abrogated and everything should be, uh, be brought to forum where necessary and there is the need for any other discussion, then it will be uh, an ad hoc committee that is created to look into that and after that, that is all. Mr. Yeboa says several petitions to Newmont management have not yielded any positive results. Efforts by Joy News for Newmont to respond to the concerns of the communities have not been fruitful. The coalition wants the intervention of the government and has Antihini to address their concerns. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. Now, President Nana Ekufuado says he'll be cutting the sword next week for work to begin on the construction of the 101 district hospitals he promised last year. He told a gathering of chiefs of the people of Brekum on the first day of his two-day working visit to the Bono region that the availability of lands and funds will now pave the way for the project um, for the hospitals without district, for the districts without district hospitals, I mean, to promote quality health delivery amidst the COVID-19 pandemic.
Precious Semebo has a wrap of the president's activities on day one of his Bono regional visit. The president started a two-day working visit in the Bono region Tuesday morning with a radio interview on Radio BAR in Sunyane and a visit to the chiefs at the Sunyane Traditional Council. Kronting Hini of the Sunyane Traditional Area, Obuaman Bofutia Bwamponsem, speaking on behalf of the Paramount Chief Nana Bosuma, Asong Kreri II, thanked the president and his government for the numerous ongoing projects, including the Sino Hydro project under which the Sunyane Ring Road is being constructed and the ongoing Sunyane Yahima Road, among others. He, however, made some appeals. In his response, the president, Nana Kufado, said roads in Sunyane are dear to his heart and just like other projects, he will see to their successful completion. In Brekum, the Sebre Dr. Mankunadi Award II, Paramount Chief of Brekum, appealed to the President for a vocational and technical university to train the youth in employable skills. President Nana Kufado on his part said, SOD will be cut next week for the construction of the 101 district hospitals he promised last year. District hospitals at the Baha and in Brekum, East and West Milano. Now, what you have been, the Baba Shedda Ako Katiso. And my 101 district hospitals are, or districts are any district hospitals will be our plan. As I said, we need to now, yeah, she shall to her contractors, this is so you are selecting contractor for. She can't say anybody shall say, so so so, the board will see her. If you feel next week, you come, you don't say, you know, I bet she has said. Become a college of education. Well known college of education. Is that many Ministry of Education for town here? I said, No, they about transform into a team that institute, or we're going to have to do a brand new university. But we will be talking about it with the authority. Later at a short ceremony, the president commissioned the Wedi Africa Tomato Processing Factory and Agro Farms at Domfete in the Brickroom West District under the One District One Factory. He also paid a courtesy call on the chief of Wenfie in the Doma East District and inspected a 40.7 kilometer Wenfie Adiembra and Trichrome Feeder Road. James Opon is the Bono Regional Manager, Feeder Roads. This is a very important road because they serve a lot of communities around. It's also on the district, it leads to Yanni as well as our region. And they serve a lot of communities, farmers, to build transport. So it's a very, very socioeconomic economic road. For Joy News, Precious Semevo, Wenfie. Now, private legal practitioner Martin Pegu says a refusal to sack Health Minister Kweku Ajumai Menu could cost the new patriotic party and PP administration the coming election. Mr. Kwebu likens this incident to the Woyomi Judgment Debt Saga, which dominated discussions around the NDC administration of 2009 to 2016. The lawyer, who has been vocal on his calls for the resignation of Kweku Ajumai Menu, was reacting to a recording of President Ekufado in which the president referred to Mr. Ajimai Menu's controversy as his receiving slaps from the public. We'll hear from Martin Pebu shortly, but first, President Ekufado. Bonfoua wama bembu dee. 
Le cas de Kosa, Kassa, 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 Kassa. Nous dors au papa. Ministre de Health, il y a un papa à la soupe. Normalement, je suis à Jimamedou. Je suis à Jimamedou. Now, speaking on Prime Morning on Joy Prime TV, Martin Pebu said President Ekufado must sack Mr. Ajimaimenu to prevent the suspicions from being extended to him. I could defend him. Oh, trust me, he wouldn't have wasted any time at all in coming to his defense. Because, you see, the issues are all clear. I mean, Mr. Ajimaimenu is lost on all the grounds. The plethora of lies is told, embarrassed us. I mean, the lies were just one too many. Uh, and don't forget, as we keep speaking now, there was somebody who had a direct relationship with the, uh, this, what do you call it, the distributor in Russia, who was going to sell us this vaccine for $12.5. As Mr. Admanenu, to date, they didn't sign with him. They didn't sign that contract, but he chose to go and sign for $19. I mean, it's such an abuse of the public purse. Oh, Mr. Adjimamenu will pay a high price for this thing. He's mm. really going to pay. I mean, you see, it's time our politicians realize that Ghana has changed. Citizens are engaging, you see, and in this era of freedom of information, yeah, you think twice before you do that. The mess Mr. Adjimamenu has uh, created reflects also on the president who, yeah, it doesn't need anybody to say anything. We don't need to say anything. It's clear. Because, you see, so the more he keeps him in government, then the more it becomes a reflection of the president's own stewardship. And I'm not sure the president wants to suffer this. In any event, what is it that's so special about Mr. Adjimamini that the president wants to continue to suffer politically? So, well, for me, I'll be very surprised. For now, the way I really see it is that Mr. Adjimamini's days are numbered. Because, look, don't underestimate Ghanaians. This country is changed, though. This country is changed. As I told you, remember the Wyoming saga? They stretched two elections, and by the second election, yeah, the message had sunk. Sunk in. Well, 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 well. So this one, whether Mr. Adjimamini is sacked or not, it's, it's heading for the same trajectory. You see? Mm. Now, the third edition of your politically incorrect show, State of Play, will focus on the political dynamics surrounding the embattled health minister as more pressure piles on him to leave office following revelations in the report of the parliamentary committee that probed the Sputnik V vaccine contract. Well, our crack team of the best political analysts in the country will break down the issues surrounding the most topical story of the week. Here's a teaser of what you should expect tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. on our social media handles. So this week on State of Play, a very important topic, perhaps the biggest topic of the week, that is the status of the health minister. So politically, would it be a very wise decision for him to leave now or wait to be booted? And will the president have the whip on him? It doesn't appear so, does it? Well, it, 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 it will be a politically wise decision for the president to crack the whip on him. It's obvious he's not going to leave on his own. Maybe he would, I mean, if he was going to leave, he would have left long ago. So it's in the president's interest, as one who says, I would not let anybody do anything that would bring uh, you know, my administration into disrepute, to tell Kwe Kwa enough, get out. I mean, it happened to Bwache Jakun, why can't it happen to Kwekwa Jiman Menu? So, because consistently, yeah. as the days go by, it is becoming clear that Kwekwa Jiman, that something just doesn't add up in this case. Is that political capital to be made for not sacking him? What are the uh, tips on the table here? For example, will the people in Doma, will the people in Parliament, will the constituency command be against the NPP or perhaps against the presidency if he's sacked. Is that a constitution on the table? Is there a bigger problem? That's the more reason why the president will not be in the interim willing to do such a thing. Well, I do not think there will be a lot of political capital if the president does not sack Kwe Kwe Jiman I don't see the capital the president would want to achieve, keeping Kwe Kwe Jiman If he wants to achieve some political capital, he can actually get another 
person from the area appointed into his government. Yeah. He's been touting the appointments in the blue area. So, look, when it comes to political capital, the best political capital, and this is a president who's in the second term, yeah. so it is his party That's true. that can have a political capital. Mm -hmm. And the party would not want to have this around this neck. So this debate is certainly going to continue. So tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. on State of Play, only on social media, we are going to make sure that we bring you the very political lens to this particular issue, dissect it properly, and tell you what the way forward is supposed to be. It's going to be an exciting show tomorrow. Now, Ghana's education has always been long on theory and short on practicals. The result is that the country depends so much on foreign countries for various technological inventions. The Ministry of Education wants to reverse this trend by improving science, technology, engineering and mathematics education in Ghana. My colleague Judith Aotitando attended a stakeholder consultative meeting in that regard and has filed the following report. Meet Isaac Ousuansa, a teenage boy from the Kofoidria Secondary Technical School who invented a robotic aeroplane but lacks the required resources to finish his invention. I don't have the amount of money that I'm going to use to buy a product to add to my, 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 my project. He is among the many young people with great innovative ideas, yet are limited either by financial constraints or the lack of science and technology resource centers. The Education Ministry, however, intends to change this narrative. At a stakeholders' consultation meeting to promote science, technology, engineering and mathematics education in Ghana, Minister for Education Dr. Yawaduchu explained the need to open Ghana's education system to the benefits of STEM. The lower secondary of um, end of terms is what I was speaking to, uh, that is the junior high school. That to me is the weakest link in our education system at this time. Uh, when you have students uh, going, to, uh, 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 going through situations where uh, the lower secondary experience is just like primary school, uh, we don't have a very, we're not going to have a robust uh, secondary education program in terms of STEM, for example. And so when we talk about STEM, we're talking about both junior high and high school combined. So we have six years of activities that will then dovetail into programs at the university so that our students will be fully prepared for the 21st century. He further highlighted some interventions the ministry intends to implement. First of all, coding is now beginning from primary four. It's, it's required. So, um, which means that now you are not just looking at waiting till the universities to look at some of the things that is going on, but you are creating a pipeline. Smart schools that we are talking about, as president has graciously funded, uh, the, those new schools will open um, and then we have STEM centers in 20 other senior high schools. So those are existing senior high schools where STEM is going to be infused in the, into the teaching and learning process. So that will be uh, the starting point or what I call phase one. The event was followed by a robotics exhibition where various companies showcased their prototypes made right here in Ghana. These are deck sign set products made in Ghana, which is solving the STEM problem. Uh, this is the first STEM uh, product made in Ghana to be approved by NACA. That is the official body for standardization of our content. So in here, we have activities that covers electronics. Every single activity that is supposed to be done in the new curriculum is rightfully captured here. So beside every science textbook, there's supposed to be a DEX science set. From digestion to creation of ther uh, thermometers, understanding between um, temperature and then heat, it's all covered here. If I should pick the military, you know, there are some places where women, it, it would be dangerous for women, uh, as a woman being to go there, and the mining sector. So normally they use this robotics or robot. Let's bring you our headline story. And the World Health Organization says it has detected a highly infectious and deadly viral disease, which it says has a potential to spread far and wide. In a statement, the WHO said the first patient identified in southern Guinea has already died of the disease. Marburg virus disease is set to be in the family of the Ebola virus and has case fatality rates of up to 88%. The WHO has already begun cross-border surveillance with neighboring countries put on alert. Now, we have been joined by the head of our health desk, Fred Smith, who has more details about this disease. 
Fred, what have you been able to gather? Fred, please unmute your microphones. It's difficult to hear you. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Organized labor has expressed worry about the rising cost of living, which has reduced real incomes. Now, real wage has declined since 2012, uh, 2012, and the group made up of several labor organizations wants government to immediately address the challenge. General Secretary of the Trades Union Congress, Dr. Alban, disclosed this at the labor perspective of the media budget review. Here's more. The event heavily attended by members of organized labor, Dr. Yalban said, analyzing from inflation and exchange rate perspective, workers' real incomes based on the minimum wage have taken a nose dive. He said job losses, reduced pay, and wage awards below inflation have occasioned suffering. He therefore urged government to support the citizens to reduce their suffering. Real wage for public sector workers has started declining and it is not right. We should make sure that the single spine is designed to ensure that real wages actually increase, but not decline. And I think we have people and expertise in this country to be able to do it, to ensure that any negotiation can be tied to it. We work out the real, the real wages and see if the real wage from one year to the other is declining, government adjusts pay said the real wage will not decline. Dr. Yaoba also called for a reform of the Bank of Ghana to strengthen its regulation in order to prevent bank failures in the future. Organized labor is unhappy that 22 billion cities were spent to clean up the banking sector, but the situation that triggered the collapse of the banks have not been addressed. If you are using 22 billion to clean the banks, this is expensive. There are very few things that cost that much. And if a reform should cost 22 billion, it means that we have really spent money on this. And what we are saying here is this, that if you look at how much money we have spent to make sure the banks are clean, we should never make a mistake of going back to that state again. Therefore, the Bank of Ghana itself must have to be reformed. Organized labor is made up of several workers' union, including local government workers' union, Health Services Workers Union, Public Services Union, and Ghana Mine Workers Union. And in other news, uh, the Ghana Cocoa Board has started data collection in the Ashanti region as part of implementation of the cocoa management systems. The exercise, when completed, will enhance traceability, prevent smuggling of cocoa, and reduce operational costs by 30%. Cocoa Board Deputy CEO Emmanuel Poku is positive the successful implementation will encourage high annual cocoa production. Prince Apia has more in the following report. Cocoa farms, farmers and their households are being registered across the cocoa producing regions for the cocoa management system. Data collection for the western south region is already completed. Officials say registration in the Ashanti region will soon begin as part of the effective implementation of the system nationwide. Emmanuel Poku is the deputy CEO of Cocoa Board. When we register you, we give you, uh, f number one, the address of your farm, which you can use for financial transactions with your bankers. And then number two, an ID with a unique number. That number is what you're going to use for all your cocoa transactions, whether it is sales of your beans or purchase of inputs. So without which you cannot sell cocoa, when the system is fully operational. At the end of the day, we will have every cocoa farm address in a database. And we're going to use that to improve the services that we give to farmers. That is the cocoa sales, input sales, that is input deliveries to farmers, and then many other things. And we expect that this, the introduction of cocoa management system will reduce the cost of operations of this industry by about approximately a third. Available records show that Ghana has already exceeded the ambitious 1 million tons of cocoa production for this year. And that's all for business. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com for slash business. There's more coming up at the top of the hour on the marketplace up next sports.
Good afternoon, welcome to Showbiz here on Joy News. Now, a few weeks after the release of Sarko Dia's No Pressure album, a gospel musician MOG has been talking about his collaboration with Sarko Dia. Okay, so I, I mean, I keep saying this Sarko Dia and myself, we are childhood friends. We grew up in some, from the same neighborhood. So, like, he called me, you know, so I was like, there was this song, song, can you jump on it? I'm like, why not? Bring it, let's do it. So, I mean, he sent it to me, it was amazing, and I, I just did it, yeah. You know, working with Sarkodie, are you looking forward to collaborating with more secular musicians? I mean, I think it's the orientation, you know, for me, it's orientation. Um, as long as it sits right with my spirit and um, I believe there's a positive relationship or an impact I can make on the individual, not his followers. Once I impact him, I can, I can have access to his followers, you know, so I'm looking for that one-on-one -on -one encounter from his orientation, you know, and if any circle artist walks up to me and has a good gospel song and wants me to jump on it, amazing, I'll, I'll do that.